Uh, so in this video, um, I'm going to uh, show you how to solve this problem, which is a pretty cool problem. But notice that because it's a definite integral, what we're to do is uh, come up with a number, right? It has a numerical value and it represents the area under the curve of the absolute value of um, sine of 2018 pi x, right? Okay, cool. And the number um, that we're to come up with is 4036. That's the answer. Um, let's see how to get there. All right, so first come over here to um, this graph of just f of x equals sine x, right? So if we just graph f of x equals sine x, we know that one full period um, can be uh, from 0 to 2 pi. And uh, if we just integrate from 0 to 2 pi, um, the function sine x, right, um, dx, we get 0. And that's because if this here has area of a, right, then um, this here has area of negative a. Um, so uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi represents the sum of a and negative a, which is 0. Right? Cool, cool. All right. Now, if on the other hand, right, if on the other hand, um, well, let's keep that a there, um, I put absolute values around here, then now the function I'm dealing with will still be the same from uh, 0 to pi, but uh, the portion from pi to 2 pi would flip over the x-axis so that uh, this too has a, an area of a. So as soon as I put these absolute values around sine x, then now uh, the area is no longer 0. The area is 2a. So uh, this is one of the two uh, things we need to discuss. And the other thing we need to discuss is what happens if I was dealing with sine of bx instead of just sine of x, right? Okay, cool. Uh, both of uh, those together should help us figure out how to deal with this guy. Well, if I um, dealt instead of uh, uh, sine x with sine, I dealt with sine of bx, right? Um, instead of sine x, if we're dealing with sine of bx, well, the period would no longer go from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, if b is greater than 1, the period would uh, shrink, right? So it would go from 0 to something less than 2 pi because uh, if we have the function sine of uh, bx, then uh, this function has period given by 2 pi divided by b. Um, and so, so, yeah. So in this particular case, we have both of those things going on, the absolute value and the fact that we have sine of bx instead of just sine of x. So first, let's figure out the period. So the period of sine of um, 2018 um, pi x, right, the period of this function, would have to be 2 pi over um, 2018 uh, pi, right? 2 pi divided by 2018 pi. OK, first we do this. Take off that and take off that. And this would reduce to uh, 1 over um, one over 20. Well, no, sorry, not 1 over 2018, but 1 over 1,009, right? Because that 2 there in the 2018 will mean the denominator is 1,009, the numerator is 1. You know how to simplify numbers. OK, OK, OK. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So, so now, first, uh, before we throw in the absolute value bars, right, if we just did the integral from 0 to um, 1 over 1,009, right, if we did this and it was sine of... Um, 2018 pi x, tell me what the answer would be uh, for this. Well, okay, gave you enough time. This would have to be zero because this would be uh, 1 over uh, 1009, but otherwise, um, you know, we'd still have a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So this is an appropriate graph so long as uh, one full cycle ends there, right? Okay, cool. So we still have the a plus negative a situation. And that's what we uh, want to um, do away with. As I said, uh, when you put absolute values around here, first we can no longer say the area is um, the area is zero. If this is a, now the area is two a, right? Um, okay, cool. Uh, and that's because, like I said, this portion of the graph, as soon as we put the graph of um, the graph of sine of 2018 pi x, would flip over uh, the x-axis and this uh, label is no longer appropriate, so let me get rid of it because obviously we've changed the period, right? Okay, okay. But yeah, so this is now the graph of sine of um, 20, oh, that's poor writing, sorry. 
this is the graph of sine of uh, 2018 uh, pi x, right? Okay, all right, cool. Uh, but we have these absolute values, like I said, so we need to actually move this portion to be above uh, the x-axis and get rid of the part that's below the x-axis. So that's a nice first. Uh, so this part no longer applies. So I will actually like uh, use my snipping tool. So there we are. So now um, I must uh, change this to have absolute values, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So A to A. But wait, um, so, so instead of uh, the absolute values, what about if I write um, that, that this here is the same thing as uh, the integral from 0 to uh, 1 divided by 2018, 1 divided by 2018 instead of that. So I went halfway of the period. And if I wrote um, sine of uh, 2018 um, pi x, I don't need the absolute values anymore. This is going to equal a. And that's because on this portion, uh, the function absolute value of sine of 2018 pi x and the function just sine of 2018 um, pi x agree, like on this part. So they're the same function. So I'm able to get rid of the absolute values and still get the value a, the value of that integral. Um, it's just that this point now is 1 over uh, 2018, right? OK, cool. So I could just do this and then figure out how many of these areas fit in the interval from 0 to 2018 pi, right? Figure out how many of them there are and just multiply this integral by that number, right? Yeah, we can do that. So let's do that. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. So, so um, uh, we're happy because from a practical standpoint, we know how to do this antiderivative now. We've gotten rid of the absolute value and so it's made uh, a lot easier, right? Okay, cool. So first, let's slide this up somewhere um, and then um, figure out what number we need to multiply by right here. So the number we need to multiply by is basically uh, this divided by that, right? That's how we're going to figure out how many intervals of length from 0 to 1 over 2018 fit into the interval of length 0 to 2018 pi. So we just do the division, and so that's 2018 pi divided by uh, 1 divided by 2018, and uh, that is going to be 2018 squared times pi. Yeah? Okay, cool. So that's the number we need to multiply by times pi. All right, so I actually want to include the equal sign and drag this uh, right in front of our integral. And now this is what we've got. Now we've got that uh, logically this is equal to this, right? They're the same now. Um, all right, all right. So we're almost at the finish line. We just need to figure out the antiderivative of this and evaluate from 0 to 1 over 2018 and we will be done. So we've got 2018 uh, squared times pi, and then we have the antiderivative of this is uh, negative cosine of uh, negative uh, cosine of uh, 2018 uh, pi x uh, divided by 2018 uh, pi evaluated uh, from 0 to 1 divided by uh, 2018, right? Okay, cool. So here we are. Um, first, let's get rid of this. And next, let's slide this up. And now um, we'll have 2018. Uh, well, first, let's simplify, right? Um, so first we can cancel here and here and just write uh, 2018 and that's good, right? So uh, we still have 2018, but we no longer have a denominator there. So we just evaluate this there and then evaluate it uh, here and take the difference. So negative, you know how to do this, cosine of um, 2018 pi times 1 over 2018 is just going to be uh, pi inside of cosine, right? And then we'll have minus and then negative cosine of 2018 pi times 0 is just 0. So we have this. Uh, and this is going to equal 2018 
times uh, negative cosine of pi is negative one so we have one right there and then the minus minus is going to be plus and cosine of zero is one so we have one plus one uh, which is oh I'm too eager to finish <laughs> clearly uh, so this is 2018 uh, times two which is in fact 4036 yeah all right cool I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching